Hello, I'm Nadira Tudor and I'd like to welcome you to this session of SAP Sapphire Now, focused on supply chain and manufacturing. And we're going to ask why ERP decisions made today will impact the supply chain for the next 20 years. Joining me, I have three special guests. Firstly, Bo Leikegaard, who is Associate Vice President for European Applications Research at IDC, joining us from Denmark. Jaren Main, who is SAP Director for Digital Technology Services at Fujitsu in Europe. And Paul Bresnahan, Head of Manufacturing Industry for the Americas at Fujitsu, based in Dallas, Texas. It's fair to say that it's been an extraordinary year for supply chains and manufacturing. Supply chains came to everyone's attention due to factors like the enormous delays that many countries faced in getting PPE equipment and protective face masks. And just as we thought the world was starting to return to normal, there was Ever Given, the enormous cargo ship which ended up blocking the Suez Canal for almost a week in March this year and further exposing the fragility of our global supply chains. So, Bo, let's start with you. What do you think the longer term impact of the COVID-19 pandemic will be on the supply chain and manufacturing? Well, you said it. I mean, uh, disruptions, um, we saw so much of that and it impacted uh, uh, manufacturers and distributors in particular. They had to find uh, do new sourcing, new procurement with new suppliers. And they also had to repivot their operations to new distribution channels, typically digital distribution channels instead of physical. So doing all these changes uh, with older ERP systems, for example, proved uh, extremely difficult. So you can say that the pandemic was really a moment of truth for manufacturers and distributors. And uh, and that is the main takeaway that I think there it has kind of given rise to the need to revisit their own kind of infrastructures just to, to cope with with uh, all these changes. Jaron Bo just said the pandemic was a moment of truth. In your opinion, how has the pandemic impacted Fujitsu's customers who use SAP systems? Well, you know, as we've had more of the, the rapid changes, the need to understand what's going on in an organisation, you've needed an agile platform for SAP to sit on. And actually, traditional architectures have proved really, really cumbersome, slow to change. They take time. They take planning. Where as a cloud, uh, platforms are much more agile. They can spin up, spin down very, very quickly and help those organizations react to some of the changes we've seen uh, over the last 12 to 15 months. Turning to you, Paul, how have these challenges played out in the manufacturing sector and how are manufacturers responding? Yeah, I think uh, COVID had a real effect on the manufacturer and they realized they needed greater agility within their supply chains. But to have agility, you need visibility. And this is where the concept of digital thread has been growing really strong so that people can have the information they need to maximize production and customer service. Um, This is a concept in the SAP world known as PEO, um, Production Engineering and Operations. So let's take the aerospace industry, for example. So if you're building an an airplane engine, that's a complex piece of manufacturing. There's a lot of parts that go into that. It's a long assembly to build it. Um, Often the lead times on an engine is over a year and a lot can happen in that time frame. And what are the implications? Yeah, so so if you think about um, a raw material changes or a piece of standardization changes, Uh, The engineer or the engine manufacturer needs to disseminate that information across the supply chain because documentation will need to be corrected to support whatever that change is. And if it's not done correctly in the right place, it can lead to major safety issues and implications. So, you know, we're facing challenges and problems here. Are there any solutions? What's your solution, Paul? Yeah, so so in a a kind of non-digitized environment, you can imagine that trying to cope with those sort of changes would be slow and very expensive. Um, But Fujitsu, we're kind of one of the major and few implementers of SAP's S for HANA PEO system within the aerospace industry. Coming back to you, Bo, you said earlier that the gap between digital and analog supply chains is getting bigger. Can you give us an example of this? Um, 
the gap is it happens, especially when there is um, disruption. And uh, we've talked about it already about sourcing new suppliers very quickly on the fly, but also participating in new um, marketplaces, digital marketplaces, and uh, kind of reconfiguring uh, your business. This is uh, the kind of situations where the difference between those with a kind of traditional transactional ERP system and those with, with kind of more modern, more flexible cloud-based ERP systems uh, really come, come to front. And we expect that to continue. I mean, new manufacturing strategies, for example, around mass custom, uh, kind of mass customization, but also, uh, you know, servitization uh, really require kind of much more flexible uh, ERP backbones. So that's that's really kind of the crucial part. Paul, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, we've been helping customers implement these digital systems to help them move in that direction of mass customization. The key is to be able to do that without losing all of the benefits and productivity gain through scale. In fact, within our own Dallas facilities here within Fujitsu, we've implemented some mixed reality solutions to help shift away from paper-based processes and digitize those processes that allow us to push configuration data down to the shop floor. I'd like to turn back to you, Bo, uh, and ask you, as an independent expert, is this something that's increasingly important? Yeah, so the user experience is important, but, but what it really translates into and where it really becomes important is the kind of uh, planning capabilities and, and business insights. That's, that's, uh, th that, was, that has been the crucial part also during this pandemic where uh, manufacturers, distributors had had to kind of replan and kind of repivot their business. And this is where kind of uh, the, the traditional ERP systems uh, have not been able to deliver because they have been transactional systems and you have had kind of uh, business intelligence systems sitting on the side delivering kind of historic uh, reports and so on. Um, the crucial difference here is that the kind of modern um, ERP platforms that we are talking about are really able to embed all of this kind of real-time business, contextual business information to the user at the time of transaction. We we'll turn to Jaren now. Jaren, outside of its own production facilities, how is Fujitsu enabling user experience, which is at the heart of the future of manufacturing? Where does the SAP supply chain come mm. into that equation? Well, it's right. I mean, one of the things we see around manufacturers at the moment is the need to share information on cloud-based systems. And actually, one of the most uh, important areas for manufacturers in that area is SAP's own intelligent asset management tool, um, which actually does open up a lot of the uh, things that Bo and Paul have been talking about and enable them for, for those uh, manufacturers. Can you give us any examples? Yeah, so um, Fujitsu is already collaborating with a robotics manufacturer and by using the SAP Intelligent a Asset Management tool, we're able to digitalize that and actually get a 360 de degree view of the product. And if you think about what that means, that really starts to then put all the information in about that, that, that robotic uh, elements, uh, the, the um, actual pages, the, the instruction manuals, the parts, uh, all of those things that, that go to make up that and also further on down the supply chain, so service engineers, et cetera, et cetera, have all of that information available. And that really does take a lot of the pain, the risk and the worry away from manufacturers. Well, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was mentioned that the move to, to cloud-based systems. Um, I mean, IDC's research uh, shows that um, there's going to be a major move to the cloud in the ERP world, and it's, it's happening now. Uh, when we look at what people are planning to do, the majority will make a, a pure cloud setup with their ERP system. There's going to be some with hybrid type deployment where some part is going to stay on premise and some part is going to be in the cloud and very few, which is going to stay kind of completely on premise with their next generation uh, ERP platform. Um, but 
these ERP migrations are also notoriously risky and complex. And we do see a lot of uh, customers, uh, ERP customers right now, also in the manufacturing and distribution industry, uh, sitting on the fence, so to say, and really having difficulties kind of planning the, the road ahead. Yeah, is this what you found as well, Jaron? Absolutely. And I'd echo what both said. So we have found that lots of clients haven't found or have developed a strong enough uh, business case. Um, it is an area that I'm particularly feel strongly and passionately about that actually I do think a lot of the business case, the value from an S4 implementation lies further down in these digital technologies we've been talking about. But actually, you know, clients can do and start an optimization program even now. So baby steps, just moving to the cloud is the first part and actually then looking at tidying up their existing environment are all steps on the S4 journey. On that note, can you tell us a little bit more about the different types of approaches? There's greenfield, which means starting over, and brownfield, which is a modernisation. The term bluefield is also coming up more and more. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, Bluefield is, is a, a technology that we, we work with a partner uh, called SMP. And effectively, what it will do is it will scan for your custom code and it will take just the custom code that you use and leave the old custom code that's no longer used uh, back where, where, where it was. So it's a very highly efficient um, and risk averse process. Which is great. And can you tell me more about how that makes Fujitsu special when it comes to SAP modernization? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Fujitsu investing heavily in its tools and its approach so that we can actually handle any uh, scenario, however complex, in addition to which we've invested heavily with a partnership with SMP and our team's abilities to develop and to roll out that technology uh, with that partnership. That's a great point. But let me ask you, Bo, is S for HANA migration the only option right now, realistically? Uh, no, I would say that there is a uh, multiple paths ahead for um, for, for um, SAP ERP customers uh, for sure. Um, we have done a lot of research in the, in that area, and uh, I would say the conditions for each uh, company varies tremendously, and this has a great impact on what is the the optimal path uh, to take. Is it a burning platform, or do you have a working ERP system? which you have invested a lot of money in and which is not a, a cause of concern uh, right now. So there's a lot of uh, conditions playing in. I would say that apart from the, um, the, the, the business case that we've just talked about, I do see a need for, for some of these companies to work on risk mitigation when they evaluate this you know, move to a next generation platform just like uh, S4HANA. And also do with, with some of the comments that Jaron just uh, mentioned, I do see a need for, for some of these companies, for example, to reach out to the vendors uh, like SAP, but also to the services community, to, to, to people like uh, Fujitsu, to get some help and mitigate some of these risks. The, the biggest risks that we see are, for example, the migration of master data, the migration of customizations that was just mentioned, those are some of the headaches that, that people out there are struggling with and seeing as a risk in these uh, migrations. Yeah, uh, I'd like to hear what your last words on this is, Paul, as well. Yeah, you know, uh, manufacturers are at a crossroad right now in terms of their supply chains. I think what COVID has told us is we can't wait. This plan of two to three years of change needs to happen in the next 12 to 18 months. So as manufacturers are making their future investments now, they need to think about how that's going to make them more robust and be able to withstand the next shock that we see come around the corner. Uh, you know, my word, a word of advice for a manufacturer is don't leave it too late. Engage a company like Fujitsu, who has extensive experience, global experience in deploying transformational solutions with SAP. Um, it's just essential, right? Manufacturers need to digitize their supply chain. They need to have an end-to-end -end view of data. They need that 360 view of all the elements that constitute their supply chain. Very wise words indeed. Thank you, Paul Bresnahan and Jaron Main of Fujitsu and Bo Likegaard of IDC. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.